Um, but yeah, awesome. Uh, what's up, Mike? How are you, man? Oh, good, good. It's been summer and just kind of, you know, like I say, draft and vacations and, you know, just kind of being out of town and that. So it's good to be uh, back here. But it's a uh, busy time of year. And obviously the NHL goes a little bit quiet. There's some minor stuff going on, you know, but mm-hmm. all the free agency's done. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of like a quiet time right now for everybody. There's probably some GMs who actually get a chance to go golf or take a little bit of time for themselves and their family at this point. So it's kind of quiet. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we're kind of in like the, uh, the, the, uh, kind of the dog days of the summer a little bit. Um, you know, so obviously a lot's happened since, um, you know, we last spoke, we last spoke before the draft, your son gets taken. Um, just a quick question on that. You know, what was that like for you? I'm sure, you know, obviously, you know, call it as a side of it. What was kind of your side of that whole thing? How did you kind of find out as well? Well, it was a little bit nerve wracking, you know, because the year before, Things didn't go his way. He was passed over. And I think what we tried to do is gain a lot of feedback, like what was missing, you know, what was like kind of the consensus and what everybody thought. And then others said, well, skating's got to get better and this and that. And we said, okay, well, he's still pretty young and pretty raw. Like, let's just give it a hot second here, you know? And so we right. um, worked with somebody last summer here in Grand Rapids. And then, you know, throughout the course of the year, we were fortunate that he was on a good team and had a nice role. So, you know, he's going to get a ton of ice time every day and, uh, every game, you know, he's going to get a great chance to develop. And so um, kind of combining a new coaching staff in Fargo and better players, they had a real nice team. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to him and right. what he wanted to do with it. And so, you know, I mean, he was pretty, you know, upset after the first, you know, the, you know, missing the uh, not being taken in 2022. And he was actually really pissed off about it, you know. So that was good, you know, but you had to go back and improve. And you, you can be mad all you want, but you've got to show it on the ice. And so, right. You know, yeah. like you touched on earlier. In your and he talk, did that. You can't, right. you can't do anything else than, right. any more than what he did this year. So my wife and I were super proud of him. And we just, we watched it at home in Grand Rapids. He's in South Bend. That's about two hours apart. Mm-hmm. And just some of the restrictions they have over school and missing class at Notre Dame became hard for him to go to draft and make enough time at development camp. So he had to pick up poison a little bit, either go to the draft and, you know, not go to camp as long or, you know, don't go to the draft and go to camp a little bit longer. So, right. Uh, you know, we were ecstatic though when it was all over. More, more of relief too. You know, yeah. and so I got a text from Danny real quick before there. You know, I think it was that pick one hundred and one or something. They were on third, and so Danny texted me, and then you know it was super exciting. We try and record it on. We had a recording on the DVR, but you try and record it, you know, with the phone or whatever. Everybody's reaction. Right. It was fun. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, look, I mean, a, a lot's happened uh, with the Flyers. A lot of different things. Um, they took Matt Mitchkov at number seven. Uh, I'm I'm curious, kind of, what you think about this, and 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 you, you might think I'm nuts, but there's been a lot of uh, comparison of of Mitchkov with Ovechkin. You're a sure. former teammate of yours. Is that something that that you think is is maybe a possibility for maybe the clips and stuff that you've maybe seen from him or anything like that? Like, is there anything that lead you to believe that someone could be just like Ovechkin again? Yeah, I don't know if they're that close in size, right? I mean, how big is – how he's not, like, super, like, hardy like Ovechkin is, right? No, he's not. Yeah. No. I mean, they're, they're – you know, that's a big – I mean, you can call – that's a big, big reach, you know? And obviously, yeah. you know, why he dropped to seven, I mean, he's probably a top three or four talent, but he dropped out – dropped, you know, dropped three spots to seven. But, I mean, um, why well, I think Philly's super happy is that he's a better talent. I think, obviously, everything going on geopolitically – yeah, it made it really hard to see this kid this year. And mm-hmm. the fact that he's tied into the KHL, it's going to be a while, so you can't get him right away. And, you know, teams tend to want their top, you know, four, five, six pick, you know, right like right now, you know, and, and immediately. Right. So, you know, it is, you know, like Danny, you know, it is a bit of a gamble. It's a waiting game. And, you know, um, you know, kind of DC did it when I was there with that Kuznetsov and waiting for him a little bit. Um but, you know, like there's going to be other, you know, a couple of draft classes going too. So it'll be a, a lot of guys coming in. Hopefully you get a couple more guys coming in at the same time. And yeah. so I guess, I don't know, you got a crystal ball in your in your studio there. I mean, it, nobody knows, you know. So, But I do, you know, it's really hard to go see him this year. I think that scared a lot of people off. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, six teams in the beginning. Nor right. did anybody feel it was worthy to trade up far enough uh, to grab him. So, yeah. you know. Danny and, and Jonesy took a kind of a thing. They're going to wait and see and wait out, hold this kid and use him later. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and look, and, and that's the thing, like he fits our timeline. Um, and the Flyers only aren't going to be competitive for at least two years. Um, right. Could be longer. It depends on, on how this goes. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of different things you can think with this. Like, you know, like the other six teams, like I, I think some of them probably could have taken him maybe a, as a reach. But again, it's like, you know, like like to me, I, I couldn't have seen Arizona taking him um, because, it, you know, he I, I think it's pretty known that he wanted to play in a type of market like Philadelphia, like Washington, like, you know, Boston, New York. Right. So, I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of different things that kind of play into it as well, but it'll be interesting. I mean, these next couple of years, we'll see. Um, a couple other things as well. Uh, the Flyers, they made a couple of signings. Uh, Mark Stahl, Ryan Paling, um, Garnet Hathaway, Stahl at one year, 1.1 million. Um, depth defenseman, veteran guy. I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. Um, he's played for Torts before. Paling's on a one year prove it deal. Um, he's a guy that, you know, former first round pick that's bounced around a bit. And then Hathaway, he's, he's like that, you know, scrapper type that can score a little bit. Just any uh, thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, I think you 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 touched on pretty good. Mark Stahl, he, he, two years ago, he was in Detroit, so we saw him a bunch here in Michigan. Mm. Yeah, he's just a steady, you know, the Stahl name is just, you know, basically it's just steady, consistent play. Yeah. Uh, you know, all through the brothers, they just, you know, do a real, real nice job, and they're great pros. And Mark's being brought in to be a good pro for the young guys and, you know, for the Cam Yorks and the Ronnie Adders and guys like that when they come up and show them how, how to work and how to uh, – you know, how to be a pro every day. And so, you know, that's a good low risk signing for them. And he can handle towards, he's not going to get all wound up about it and yeah. kind of knows his role and his, you know, time's probably diminished on the ice a little bit mm-hmm. and he handles it well. And that's why he's, you know, getting some bonus, bonus contracts here at the end. And then Paling is, you know, I think he was a college kid. He's come around, bounced around a little bit, but you know, it's a bit, you know, it's kind of a low risk signing again. And maybe the kid, you know, he's looking at it's like, I got to resurrect myself here. Here's a chance. Yeah. chance to go and you know I'm, you know a little bit a little bit above the the league minimum and you know so there's a little bit of money there for him but you know a chance for him and he's got to look at it like it's my chance to resurrect myself and maybe try to turn this into something then Hathaway's a nice pick he provides that little bit of stiffness and you know abrasiveness on the ice and you know plays a lot bigger than he is and sticks his nose in places and yeah. you know guys you know team he's you know at least one of those guys you hate when he's not on your team and probably love him when he's in your locker room, you know? And so, um, you know, I think you just got to be, obviously, uh, 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 Washington traded, got some good, good, good product back for him. And then probably became too, too rich for, uh, for Boston, you know, and a guy like him has some nice value to the team with cap and who's young and, and kind of needs like that. Just a, just a guy to show up every day, bring his lunch pail. And, yeah. you know, some nights he'll drag guys into the fight, you know, and probably, mm-hmm when fans aren't used to a team kind of just kind of playing it out and just not much happening and you're kind of like watching the game twiddling your thumbs. Like he'll, he's the type of guy that's got pretty good sense to, to know when to kind of like, okay, I'm going to make something happen here. Maybe bump a goalie, maybe do this, do that, you know, something just to kind of get the crowd, just see if you can't drag his bench into the fight a little bit. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I a hundred percent agree with you. I think all of them, I mean, really all three signings, I mean, they're all, low risk high reward i mean especially paling i mean he's 24 he's a guy yeah. that can you know if he ends up rebounding um i mean again former first round pick still in that similar boat and he's actually played with a couple guys before he's played with delorier played with Farabee in uh in the uh, u.s program um and you know it's interesting what you said about hathaway too because he's the type of guy that like i i feel like you know he he probably could have went anywhere you know what I mean? Like he could have went to any other team. It definitely wasn't that the Flyers were the only one uh, looking in on him. Uh, so I, 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 to me, I look at these as just like, you know, it's simple deals that can help out. And even later in the line, like, again, like you said, like Washington trades them. I think they got a first round pick for him at the deadline. That's something that in a couple of years that, that the Flyers can get back to. So, I mean, it, all of it is, you know, helping us now and then helping the, you know, the Flyers at the, later in the line as well, too. So, yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's, well, paying just a little more stability, you know, up front. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, he should be looking toward the Kate deal. You know, if I can do what this guy did, you know, maybe, right, exactly. Close, you know, maybe I can parlay this into something. But the other two are just good veteran guys and, and yeah. they're, you know, they help with the fourth down. And just, you know, guys that tore to, you say, lean on, you know, maybe he'll lean on them some days, he'll go after them some days. It's just, yeah. you know, and, they, and they've got enough thick skin where they can be like, okay, I get what he's saying. I'm not going to get all bent out of shape. I understand. You know, right. 
what he's where he's trying to take us and he's going through us to get to the team so you know we're they're, they're kind of willing to to do that and kind of swallow that pill just to you know kind of help things move forward yeah no exactly and and you know again at the same time it can help out the younger guys yeah. um you know for if they're dealing with something with towards something like that too so all of it kind of plays a factor. Uh, we talked about this before um, about D'Angelo. He was rumored for the trade. Uh, that ended up not happening, and he ended up getting bought out. Um, it saves the Flyers money now. It's like 1.6 and in, in, in a lot of change uh, for two years uh, on the buyout. They got the second buyout window because Kate's um, elected to not go to arbitration. He did, and then they ended up you know, finishing in pretty quick. Um so without D'Angelo, and I'm curious kind of what you think about this too, because because again, we've talked about this before about how pretty raw that their D is right now. If you're looking at the at the roster, and again, that was also before they got stall too. But you have Sanheim, Ristolainen, York, Walker, Stahl, and Sealer, and then you have Zamula. Like and it, it's pretty raw, and it just I just feel like there's gonna be a lot of people, and and me myself included, I think, too, that are probably gonna be like just it, it just doesn't seem like the defense is really going to hold up for much long as, as the season starts yeah you feel like it's not super sexy right like it's yeah. like not and not necessarily like you know if you're a forward on the team it's not exactly putting the fear of god in you when you're coming out of the ice you know right and, you know like well there's a bunch of kids out here i'm probably gonna have you know an easy night at least d'angelo was a little bit Provided some offense, but too, and a little bit of an X factor. Like, you know, he could do something a little bit weird and get involved in, in, in that. But it, obviously the point was made to management and said, you better just get rid of this guy because I'm not – I'm telling you right now I'm not playing him, so you you need to cut bait and get mm-hmm. him out of here as fast as you can the best way for you guys. So, um, you know, you hate to kind of give a guy up right now with a little bit of veteran, you know, like he's got some – you know, he's got a couple of years on him and – you know, that, that's important every year that goes, you know, every, those are valuable guys right now, you know, somebody with some experience. So, um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, and if you're, if you're one of these younger guys, you get, these guys should be really excited to come into training camp because there's a spot or two to be open, you know, yeah. and, and it's like, who's going to grab it. Even, even to be a seventh man or a seventh D man or something like that, it's going to be, uh, you know, it'd be a pretty good fight for that. And that's, there's a lot of value in that. So, uh, for all those young guys, it's certainly like the door is open. It's just like who's going to get through it, you know, at first or who's going to get through it and then shut it behind them so nobody can catch them. So there's there's room there for them. Unfortunately, you know, can it end up in – is it going to end up in a lot of goals against possibly, you yeah. know, but but for those guys, it's a good chance for them to get in the league and get their feet wet again. Right, exactly. And and and, and that's the thing too. Like, like we don't have to be good right now. You know what I mean? Because it's like we, you know, we have two first round picks. The best that we can get out of those is one and eleven. If the, if you know, obviously that's you know pipe dream. But you know, I I just look at it like you know, I just feel like there's a lot of a lot of it. Just it like I just don't know, especially with the Provorov deal when they traded away him. It's like who's going to take those minutes because he's a 26, 28 minute guy, and obviously you know you played in a league a long time. Like you need guys like that to you know, play those type of minutes. I just, they don't have anyone to do that right now. Yeah. I, you know, you kind of, that's a deal that I wasn't, you know, kind of forgotten about already, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy could eat minutes, right. You know, yeah. and so that's, that's going to be a big gap. And that, you know, the unfortunate part is that's got to get spread out somewhere else. And it doesn't sound like, I mean, Mark Stahl can take some of them, you know, but you know, that, you know, but you'd love to have another two or three guys that you could split that up with and then, you know, just be much stronger as a group. So, yeah, it'd be interesting, you know. It's you know not that you know you could work a trade or something in in, in preseason or something, and I don't know if anybody should hang their hat on that. But mm. um, yeah, it's it's gonna be on. It's gonna be you know, there'll be some nights, you know, where you're walking away scratching your head like, holy cow, what just happened? And the coach just mm-hmm. happened. But it'll be on them to really try and get those guys up and running and and do the you know try and push them ahead of schedule, you know, where they probably should be coming in timeline wise and their ability. If they're predicted to be a regular in 24, well. You're gonna be a regular halfway through 23 right now, so it's mm-hmm. uh, so coaches have to really push them ahead. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, last thing I got for you, Mike. Uh, Cam York signs. Uh, Noah Cates. Um, both think the two deals. Uh, York two years at 1.6, and then Cates two years at uh, 2.625. Kind of similar. We talked about that with uh, Paling as well. Um, any quick thoughts on these? No, I mean, did you, and you need some guys that can play right now, right? You know, frankly, you need some players that can that can play and play in the NHL. And so, 
Cam York again. These little doors that open for some of these young defensemen, you know, it's you know, okay, so now they're going to give you a, a nice entry deal. You know, you're on your second contract, a little bit, a little bit more money, and see, you know, you know, and, and try and give you the responsibility as well. Kate seems to be a little bit, you know, a little more uh, proven as a forward or, or or whatever financially, or showing that in that respect. But you know, again, these are great deals, and you need guys that you know that they are, you know. Um, York is a first round pick and Cates is a later pick, but he's proven to play. So, you know, you do have to allocate some money to these guys and let them play. And, and hopefully, you know, they can, they can outdo their contract. That's what you, some of these young guys, you just hope that right now in a year or two, you feel like, Oh, cow, we just underpaid this guy. It would, and it ever, that's a win. That's a win for the player. It's a win for the team that, you know, a player can use it as, as ammunition and say, Hey, you got underpaid me and I got a lot more room to grow and you're going to pay me accordingly. And the team's like, yeah, well, we got, two nice years out of yet. If we think we're, you're going to be a player, we have no problem playing yet, or paying right. you. Yet. So, you know, I think for those guys, it's, it's certainly uh, a chance to come in and play every day and really establish himself, not only as flyers, but, you know, like his NHL everyday NHL players and then see where they end up going from there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and again, you know, you still have to sign Frost. Um, you know, you have these two guys and, and, and it's just like you said, like, you know, if if York ends up coming out and he plays like a first pair defenseman, the Flyers will have no problem playing him that. And same thing with Cates too. So it'll yeah. be uh it'll be interesting. Um, Mike, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to for uh you know help me get Cole as well. Uh, that was great. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, always good hearing your insight. And uh, I'll uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right. No problem. Thanks, Chris. Yep. All right, See Mike. You, buddy. I'll see. You.